Okay, today I'm going to show you how to fix for free the heated side mirror on these limited vehicles. This has been done on a 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. However, this process will likely work on other non-Jeep products. The model that has the heated mirrors a lot of times will delaminate. You can see how it's gotten to the point where you can't even see the reflection coming out of it. First thing we do is go ahead and pull the mirror all the way to one corner so that we have the outside edge sticking out. With the outside sticking out like that, we're going to pull in and try to pop this out of there. There. And didn't want to overforce it. But basically it just has those snaps right there that come out. And it's pretty easy to pop right out of there. Next we'll do is we'll go ahead and disconnect these wires. Second wire. Pull that off. There's a way to fix these delaminated mirrors. You'll notice if I squeeze it, there's actually a liquid behind a plastic film that's on the front of this mirror. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this plastic film and I'll show you what's behind it. By going to the back side, on the outer edge of this, there are these tabs. And if you can take your steak knife and release these tabs, you'll release the front piece of plastic that goes around the glass. So you kind of push down and push down on the tab and then push out on the piece of plastic to get it to separate. Take a steak knife, we're we'll going to come to the side of this and there's a seam and we're going to gently go along the edge and we're going to separate these two pieces of plastic. Being very careful not to break the glass that's inside. You can see as I'm working around here how this seam here is separating apart. As you continue going around the edge, you'll see how this thing is coming off right here. Now I've got the two pieces totally separated. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth, he didn't lie, he didn't steal, he didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin, he was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours, he went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. The glass that's inside here is actually two pieces of glass that are glued together. So the next thing we're going to do is very carefully, make sure you don't break this and cut yourself, is we're going to separate these two pieces of glass. Remember, if you end up breaking it, the worst case is you're going to replace it anyways. I've got my steak knife down inside it now. And here's this piece that's coming off. I accidentally broke the top piece. It's actually a piece of glass. And you can see where it has these electronic wires hooked up to it, which were for the defrost. And of course, when we put this back together, we're not going to have a defrost anymore. That'll be done. As I get underneath the edge of this part that broke off, yeah, got it. As you can see, the, the hazing was actually on the top piece of the glass. We're going to take some wire clips or some scissors. We're going to cut the remaining wire off this thing. There's a liquid inside this thing, so you need a paper towel you know, to clean that up as you go. Take a little bit of Windex. And we're going to do a little bit of cleaning to get some of that liquid you know, off of there. And it seems like there's a little bit of a 
residue across this upper edge. I don't know if you can see it. So I'm going to take a razor blade and do a, just a little bit of scraping to get some of that. Maybe it's just kind of dried up liquid or something off of there. Okay, let's dry that up. And we have a perfectly good side mirror that is no longer auto dim. Whether this is worth doing or not, it probably took me about 15 or 20 minutes to do this. So you can either spend the $70 to get a new one from the dealership. You can spend $35 and take your chances to get the right fit from one on eBay. You know, or you can do this and have a non-dimmable mirror you know, for free. That's for the plastic piece that came off. You can see it has these slots in it. Those match up to the snaps on the back side of this window casing. So we're just going to put that back together. Snap it back together. It goes around the edge. But when you go to hook it back up, do not hook up that electrical connection. And actually for the installation, I'm going to go ahead and flatten back out my circle so that when I push it in, I got it nice and flat going in. You can see around the circle that there's these little snap tabs, four on the top and there's four on the bottom. It has these metal tabs, but they don't have any place in this round circle that they insert into, so they actually go on the outside of it. Okay, you can see these tabs right here. Those are going to go on the outside of the circle, and so now you want to make sure you have it all the way lined up. Get it lined up. You can actually look down inside to see that you got some of these tabs going into the right spot. I would use a big flat push It does take a little bit of a firm push, but once you have it lined up, it'll just snap right in place. Let's see if it works good. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you were real and you were out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.